Well, a very pleasant good afternoon and welcome friends to West Indian Today. I'm yours truly, your host and dose, Imran Ahmad, welcoming you to today's program. As always, it's an honor and a privilege coming into your homes and also in, uh, through the means of your television sets. We want to say thank you to ITV chairman, Dr. Padma Shri, Dr. Sudhir Parikh, uh, the founder of Parikh Worldwide Media and also chairman of ITV Gold for allowing us to come into your homes once again to present to you the very best of the Caribbean diaspora. Over the years, we've had the privilege of speaking to to the established elites and also getting to know the young and upcoming, the talented ones, those surfacing and making a name for themselves. And I would have to say that when we talk about the young and upcoming, many of them discover talent in themselves uh, later on in their lives. However, today, here is someone, I'm gonna to talk to a very talented young lady who discovered this talent in her, very early in her career. She's had tremendous support and of course, tremendous response from all her followers on social media. She made a, she actually made a, uh, you know, a name for herself uh, uh, through the means of you know, music and stole everyone's hearts and of course, got so much attention at Chutney Glow 8.0 at the Save Abbey Foundation amongst the Indo-Caribbean audience. However, she's been gaining so much of attention uh, prior to that and after that. Ladies and gentlemen, the very talented individual I'm talking about is none other than young rapper Brizzy Felly, who joins with me on deck today. I want to say welcome to Brizzy Felly. Thank you, thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So happy holidays to you. It's good to see you after like about several months now. Same to you, same to you. All right. So, you know, Brizzy Felly, actually, um, before we do get into, you know, our discussion, uh, you know, I mean, as when I met you about like a few months ago for in preparation for Glow 8.0, mm. prior to that, I mean, uh, on some of the social media pages, I mean, and th that's the thing, lots of people share videos on social media, never catches my attention. Yeah. However, a few individuals were sharing, uh, you know, a video of yours where you were mm -hmm. freestyling, rapping, and then I, I just listened for about 30 seconds and I said, this kid's got talent. And then I <laughs> met you at a, at a campaign launch uh, mm -hmm. for district leader, Richard David and uh, then you know we, we worked together I mean a few months ago so since Glow 8.0 what's been going on with you let our viewers know um, I've been working on a lot of upcoming music I've been doing a couple shows and I've been trying to make connects with a lot of other people to make some great music for you guys too so. definitely all right so and that's what we're talking about actually you know I mean uh, Bollywood Bangra is like one of those upcoming music in which uh, mm -hmm. you don't want to present to everyone yeah. but um, let's get into it now like I said you're a rapper and mm -hmm. you're 15 years old I mean mm -hmm. very talented thank um, you, thank you. first of all before this uh, you, the rapper Brizzy Felly was created mm -hmm. Who would, or who would you say inspired you know, the creation of Brizzy Felly? Um, I think what inspired me the most is not so much of a person, but um, some of the things that I've experienced and I didn't have anyone to express them to. Or I didn't have a certain platform to express them on. And I think I used to write poems when I was younger. Right. And I would, when, I, when I got older, I would create them into a, a whole song. Okay. And I think the whole inspiration behind that is just emotions themselves. Right. And, um, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so expressing yourself in the form of poetry and then, you know, changing that into music. And I feel like music is all about a person's expression. It's all about, mm -hmm. like, telling his or her story. And uh, those who appreciate, you know what I mean, though it's, like, how much they understand or how much they can relate to the story. That depends on, you know, who really appreciates the music. And uh, turning the, something like poetry mm -hmm. into rap, I mean, uh, because yeah. many people <laughs> feel like they're two separate uh, entities. So mm -hmm. how is that? I mean, how is that, basically? Well, the whole poetry aspect was just to really just rhyme words together right. and to create um, emotions through words that are so simple like cat and dog such right. simple words but and then once you add a beat to it it's just a whole nother world opens up and then you can use that as a base for your songs well for me I use them as a base for my songs and then from there it just exploded into a whole nother level and then yeah all right so Brizzy Felly I mean I'm trying to get an idea so what inspired the name Brizzy Felly and what is like what does it mean though what is how did you come up with that name um Brizzy Felly um Brizzy is just I'm just like a very it's weird, but a breezeful person. Okay. Okay. It's just, you know, I just let everything flow and I just go with the flow. And Feli, my name is Felicia, right. so Feli 
just came from Felicia. Yeah. So I guess uh, when we introduced you for Glow mm -hmm. 8.0, we were like, well, it's a breeze coming through. I mean, we weren't <laughs> wrong with that one. Yeah. All right. So um, here's the thing. Uh, you know, you come from a great family of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who they've inherited great culture mm -hmm. uh, from the Caribbean and whatnot, too. And um, you know what we think about it? We're at a time where many people from South Asian families, from Indo-Caribbean families, they're always, while they're, while they're always encouraging their children to evolve and explore, yet at the same time, they're trying to like rekindle, hang on to their roots. So when you decided to take poetry, turn it into rap, mm -hmm. was there ever anyone in the family that said, you know what, because of some lyrics that rap carries and whatnot, yeah. that uh, rap is not the right uh, form of music for you to express yourself in? Yeah, it has come up a lot, um, especially from my parents, but from now they, they support it because they see that, you know, I work hard for it, but in the beginning, yeah, there was a lot of people that were saying, oh, you know, West Indian people don't do that, right. or it's, you know, it's really weird for them to do that, but once I started pushing it and pushing it even more, people were like, well, you know, rap is just music, and rap is not, you know, subjected to a certain race or a certain ethnicity or anything like that, so it did come up, but I never let it harm me in any way, so. If you were to name a few people who are like in the rap industry or hip hop industry or, or right now, females actually, uh, who you would say was like kind of like an icon for you, who would you like, you know, put at the top of those, of that list? Um, I would definitely <coughs> put um, Young and May. Okay. Because I like her flow and I like how she carries herself. And I just like how raw her lyrics are and how you can really feel them. Right. And another one is Nicki Minaj because she has a lot of songs that I really like. Um, most of the old songs, because you know they're really deep and a lot. But yeah, most of the people that inspire me actually—it's weird, but they're boys. But it's weird, but yeah. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. So like, and you know when you mentioned it, Nicki Minaj is someone out of the Caribbean as well with Caribbean roots. I mean, from right. Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. and has received so much of fans, so much of support over the uh, over the past few years. Mm -hmm. And she's got a style. I mean, she's got like you know a creative and a unique style that's been mm -hmm. well appreciated. And I think you've got your style as well. Now, when you think about it, that when you compare writing poetry uh, prior to when you started rapping. And now when you're like taking that same idea, the same feelings, but you're turning it into rap, is it something completely different? Although the essence and the feelings are, you know, are the same, uh, are you thinking more about, well, hey, I mean, while you're rhyming it, does, would, how would it go more on a beat or something like that? Is yeah. it, are you focused on the beat now? Uh, I think it's more passionate once there's a beat on it right. because the beat matches the energy of the words. Right. So yeah, I think it does carry a different energy. When you started rapping and when you started like doing freestyling, I mean, it, would you say it's freestyling in some in some ways when you rap? Um, sometimes I do freestyle, yeah. Okay, so your first ever, well, your first product, whether it's uh, you know a song that you freestyled or you rapped or whatnot, and you did that in front of your parents. I mean, mm -hmm. what was their reaction like? Um, it was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like that was the original idea. It was like, well, what are you doing? And. I don't. It, it caught them really off guard because nobody in my family makes music. Right. So it was kind of like, like, whoa, where did where did that come from? Right. But over time, they, you know, they got used to it. They settled in with it, and now they're just like, well, this is this is what she does. So, just gonna support her through it. And the entire family, as you said, like you know, they've been mm -hmm. all proud of the process. In fact, I believe uh, talking about family. In terms of management, even family, you you know, you have your family actually. I, I believe it's your uncle who's your manager as well. Um, actually, it's now my mom. Okay, now your mom, yeah. There were a lot of differences during, you know, both of us. But it's all, it's all good blood, nothing nothing bad. But yeah, just no more business. Right. Going on. How much of your work really tells the story of Brizzy Feli? Um, I think all of them because I do base them off of things I feel and what I've been through. So, especially the new songs that are coming out. But um, I think majority of them, I think the Quiet Storm Freestyle had to be the one that expressed me the most. Right. Because in that one, I just went so hard and like, it was just, off the, some of them was off the top of my head, like towards the ending. But yeah, I think that one had to be the most, like this is who Breezy Felly is. Right, right, right. Just aggressive and hungry for, you know, whatever comes to her, so. So being aggressive, being hungry for whatever comes to her, and you know, she does so, she's aggressive and she's hungry, and of course she's aggressive in terms of letting her voice and her emotions be heard. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, I, one of the songs I must say I truly appreciate to this day is, I believe it's World Prayer, is mm -hmm. it? So tell us about that song and you know, tell us when and where did this idea, when it first came in your mind, and of course, uh, you know, songs of, these, of, of this nature, how much more have you composed uh, you know, similar to that? Um, world Prayer, I am working on one, um, I don't know the name for it yet, but the whole idea of World Prayer was basically just to give people a light. And it's not, it's not like the deepest song in the whole industry, but 
it definitely, I think it shows, you know, this is what the world goes through. This is how I see what the world goes through. And I just think that I can be sort of like a, like a guide. Like in one of the lyrics, I think it was, um, um, love yourself before you let these other boys slide through or something like that. And I think that was a really, really, you can feel that lyric because right. that's something that happens nowadays, but especially girls my age. Right. And I put that lyric in there just for that purpose, for girls my age. And a lot of the lyrics in that song was basically just, listen, life is hard, but you can get through it. As long as you keep your head up and you keep that light in you, you can get through it. So. Nobody understands me and they understand that. I knew I would blow up, but I didn't plan that. This is everyday movements, let the city hit me. I know a lot, but fight for few, only the real ones feel me. Shadyville gon' know what's up, cause that's the hood that raised me. Fake people don't surprise me, but real ones amaze me. I've been thinking way too much and I've been going crazy. I guess Felly ain't really been Felly lately. I lost my magic, couldn't think of any boss to spit. But then I told myself, you Felly, you got hearts to hit. I picked my pen up, started writing, look like Dr. Script. They said, tell me a secret. I said, I plead the fifth. My goons riding the night, we keep the block quiet. They said, Breezy, you gon' make it, and I ain't deny it. They tried to sell me a feature, but I didn't buy it. They said they wanna take me down. I wish you would try it. Try it. You know, at 15 years old, I mean, you have so much of insight, so much of knowledge. I mean, where do you get all of this from? <laughs> um, honestly, just having a mature mentality, I think that's what it is. You know, sometimes in my life, I've been experienced to so many things that a lot of people my age don't get, you know, opened up to or like exposed to. Right. And I think once you get exposed to things like that, you just mature yourself and it's just, okay, well, you know, I know what the world is and now I have to find where I belong and this is what I feel like I belong in. You know, it's so true that circumstances really determine the, the course of a person's life and some, mm -hmm. in some people, in some cases, some learn faster than others. Some right. people are fortunate uh, to, get, to really gain those experiences so that they can evolve faster than, you know, than others and whatnot too. And uh, in, through the process of people's, you know, evolution, they need a person like you who communicates a powerful message, you know, an right. aggressive message, especially for the young ones, uh, as you mentioned, the lyric out uh, with one of your songs. Mm -hmm. um, but when we talk about like you know some of your music and of course expressing uh, yourself through the means of music has it ever happened and and I've, I've asked this question to you know another young rapper who's also a young female up mm -hmm. and coming um, and she's also told me she's confessed to me that whenever she would write a few songs based on her life experiences she gets emotional does did any of your songs do that for you um I think World Prayer had to be the most emotional song that I've wrote because while I was writing it, it made me think like this is really like the world and um, as some of the things that I wrote about in there I've experienced like some, I was stupid young and back then I was used to do a lot of dumb things and it was just like well now I'm here and I think I just get emotional just writing period because it's like yo I can I can really do this like this is, this I can do it now because you know Growing up, like I didn't really have anybody that told me like, oh, you can like you can rap. Right. Nobody really told me like, oh, you you can rap. Like everybody was like, oh, that's that's nothing. He's fucking on school and whatever. But now that you know, I push so hard and I never give up on myself. And I think that's the biggest thing I always thank myself for is that I didn't give up. Right. Because I have so much talent in myself, and it's like if I threw that away, like that would have been a waste. But. Yeah, it does make me emotional sometimes. Yeah, you know, and it's it's actually reminds me of the words of Gary Coleman that everyone's got a special kind of story. Everyone finds a time to shine, and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you have not a lot. You know, I mean, you'll have yours, and they'll have theirs, and even I'll have mine, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, what I mean, so everyone has their time, their special story. That this is your story that we're talking about here, and of course, this is your moment to shine. As I said, 15 years old, I'm very inspired by you and with all that you're experiencing, everything that you're sharing with all of us here today. Now, in terms of being an inspiration for young women through the means of rap, um, how do you see that happening? How do you see your rap being more and more motivational and also empowering for young women of your age? Um, I think a lot of women in the rap industry are very um, under underrated right. because just for the simple fact they're female. But I think that since I portray like the traits of a boy's rap, like the aggressiveness and the, the wordplay and all of that, I think I could show them that, you know, a girl can do what a boy can do too. Right. And I'm not saying I can do it better, but you know, I can do it to that level. And 
I just want to inspire girls to be like, you know, forget what everybody else says. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And that's, that's basically it. Earlier in the program, I spoke about music. I described it to basically be a form of expression, mm -hmm. you know, expressing yourself. Yeah. And how you express yourself, what means, what methods you use to express yourself, that's all depending on, you know, on the person who wants to convey a message. I mean, right. people, some people portray it in the form of art by painting. Mm -hmm. Others write books. Some people write songs. Um, but when you come from a family, now coming back to, I, I guess, uh, talking about tradition and religion and, and all these things that come into play with when it comes to Western. West Indian families. Uh, when you see that more and more young, talented West Indian children, and of course, uh, the, uh, people from the Caribbean, uh, mentioning people such as Nicki Minaj and even uh, people such as uh, Cardi B and all these great people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really making a name for themselves, letting you, you, in which the parents said to the, uh, to the, you know, to the world, let the kid be the, you know, let the kid be themselves. Yeah. Um, when you look at people and they criticize rap and they condemn it in their own way, what is your message to them? My message to them is that rap is not subjected to anybody's personality. It's not, you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be tough to be rapping. You don't have to be a certain race to be rapping. Rapping is just a form of music, just like how you said, it's expressing yourself. So I feel like just because I'm Caribbean or just because whoever's Caribbean or whatever race it is, um, it doesn't mean that you can't do what someone else is doing. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's just music, and it's always been music, and it's just, we're just opening a new field for Guyanese people, as I see it. It's opening a new field for Guyanese people, and I think that's, that's a big step, because I haven't, I've seen um, Guyanese rappers, but what I'm doing, I've never seen before. Right. So I think it's a really good impact on the rap industry. Do you think that it's changed you as an individual? Um, I think the only thing that changed of, of me from the whole media and the music is that I learned to grow a tougher <coughs> show. And I've learned that people are going to judge you no matter what. Right. No matter what you do, people are always going to have something to say. And you just have to keep your head up and you have to keep going. And you have to use that negative energy and flip it and turn it into a positive impact. And yeah, it changed me to be tough and mature and not, you know, lash back at people that say things about me because, you know, that's not mature but yeah it made it definitely made me smarter and tougher so definitely all right so we're talking about bollywood bangra so mm -hmm. um tell us what is this all about now um bollywood banger is basically uh it's basically just about it's just a hype song right you know and i use the indian beat on it which is something i've never seen before so i think that's what makes that such a significant song because the little beat that plays in the background is actually, we researched that, I think it's from 1800s, which is a long time ago. But 1800s. I think so, I'm not sure, but I know it's from a really long time ago. But um, you, yeah. You resurrected a beat from, where'd you resurrect that beat from? Honestly, I have no, I, I can't remember the name, but it was from a really, really, really old movie. Probably my great grandma watched it, but yeah. So we were looking for, the whole reason that we got that beat is we wanted to make something different, especially since I'm Guyanese and you know, using a beat is just a beat, but right. if you have a weird significance of it, it's definitely an eye catcher and an ear catcher. It's like, oh, well, what is this? Yeah. So we use that and yeah, that, I think that's the whole reason I want to push it so much is because it's something you've never heard before, so. All right, so uh, when is that song expected to drop? Um, the music video is supposed to drop before Christmas. I will have the exact date. I post it on my Instagram and all of that on social media, but it's definitely supposed to drop before Christmas. The music video, the song is already dropped though. It's on okay. YouTube, so it's Bollywood Bangla on YouTube, so yeah. Okay, so when you came up with uh, Bollywood Bangra, I mean, uh, whose idea was this? Was this uh, entirely your idea? Yeah. or yeah, Okay, yeah. and uh, in what sense do you see yourself as Brizzy Feli, you know I mean, uh, comparing all your previous works in terms of expressing, how does Brizzy Feli, or what message does Brizzy Feli want to convey in this uh, song of uh, Bollywood Bangra? Um, basically, just, just do you, don't worry about what anybody says, and just hype yourself up when nobody else will, and yeah, just chase the money and you know, and celebrating the fusion of two cultures, right? Yep. Definitely. All right, so you know, we're almost about to wrap up with our discussion. I've got to say that there's so much that you have to offer. And uh, if there's anyone your age, you know what I mean, uh, that's also interested in getting involved in music or pursuing something in which they've always wanted to do, but sometimes traditions have kind of restricted them or something or the other, what's your message to them to go beyond that, you know what I mean, break the limitations and right. just be you. I mean, as you, as you said throughout the interview. 
Uh, my message to them is that you shouldn't let anybody determine what you want to do with your life. And you should definitely, if there's a dream that you want to pursue, you should definitely pursue it, no matter what anybody says. Even if it's your parents, because my parents didn't want me to rap, and we're here now. So, But yeah, I think you should definitely just do what you want to do, do what you love if it makes you happy. It's what makes you happy and nobody can stop you. So, yeah. As we are wrapping up, uh, final few words, I would like for you to basically uh, thank anyone you would like to thank for, you know, inspiring you along your journey. Uh, anyone you want to say, you know, be thankful, who you're thankful to, to be supportive of your career. And also, how can one follow you? Um, well, first, I want to say thank you to you for having me. My pleasure. Um, I want to thank you to my parents, my brother, my grandma, my grandpa, my cousin Jasmine, um, all my friends at school. And um, basically everybody that supported me throughout this whole journey, I appreciate you. Um, even to Devin, I want to thank you too, because you know, you've been there, River Run Music Group. And um, to be like me, I think you just have to just put yourself in your own world and just live how you want to live. I want to say a very special thank you to your parents and I want to commend them actually I want to basically say that they've done a great job mm -hmm. raising you and of course encouraging you and we can't wait to see the rest of this successful story as it unfolds so all the very best I do see that in the years from uh, from now you will be sharing the same exact status as Nicki Minaj and also Cardi B and all these great names in thank fact you. just like we talk about Nicki Minaj and Cardi B I mean how it's on everyone's uh, lips today mm -hmm. Brizzy Felly is already a name that people know and more mm -hmm. and more people will know and I can't wait to see that happen. All the very best in anything you aspire to achieve. All the very best to you. Um, thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you for having me. And basically what I want to achieve is everything that I've ever dreamed of ever since I was nine years old when I used to write songs in my room. And I just want to be able to reach the heights of them and if anything, go even further than that. Do be sure to follow her on, on the social media platforms that she's listed. And of course, a very special thank you to her parents. Also, thank you to Mr. Ravi Kumar, ensuring we're able to bring today's interview into your homes uh, through the means of your television sets. I'm yours truly, your host and dose, saying that it's been my honor and my pleasure being with each and every one of you. Until next week, have a blessed and a splendid week ahead. Happy holidays. Until next time.